Hey guys, welcome back. So, happy new year. A happy belated new year. I wanted to kick off the year with a recap of my 2022 beauty favorites. So, my best of beauty video. I know I'm a little bit late on this, but I still wanted to do it for you guys. So, yeah, I'm just going to be rounding up all of my most used beauty products from the last year. Um, I didn't really want to touch on anything that I just started trying at the very, very end. So this is all just like really uh, like hardcore favorites. I think a lot of these were probably in my 2021 best of beauty. So that's how you know they're good. But yeah, we have all of the categories. I really hope this is just one video. Um, I don't want to have to do this into two parts. So I'm not going to say this is going to be rapid fire, but I want to, you know, like keep things moving. So um, without further ado, let's get into the goods. So we're going to start with face and then we will branch our way out. So we're going to start off with primer and I want to quickly just say that I feel like primer isn't super necessary unless you're looking for something with oil control or like um, filling in pores. So the rest of the primers out there for like hydration and radiance, I feel like you can get those in your skincare routine. So I'm just going to mention one primer that I've been loving this year. And I don't know if I ever actually even mentioned this on my channel, but this is the Milk Pore Eclipse Mattifying Primer. This is the mini size. I also have the full size, but I really like this. It's just like a white texture. I believe it's silicone free. Don't quote me on that, but it does a nice job at filling in pores and mattifying and oil control for that area. So um, this time of year, I typically don't need that just because it's dry and I'm not really like sweating as much and I don't have as oily of skin as I do in the summertime, but this was one of my favorites from the year. Next up, let's talk about skin tints. So I have a few and then I have like a foundation that I wanna recommend to you guys. So the one that I love the most this year was this one from Bare Minerals and this is actually not a new product. It's the Complexion Rescue. And I love this because it reminded me so much of the YSL Bare Look Skin Tint, but this has mineral SPF 30 in there as well. So I love that, I feel like most um, like tinted sunscreen type products use a chemical sunscreen and this one does not and I love it, it has a really nice gel texture um, it just has enough coverage to even out the skin and it doesn't get greasy on me throughout the day so if you're looking for a kind of tinted moisturizer type product with SPF this has been my absolute favorite the shades I use are Dune 7.5 and then I think the other one I have when I'm more tan is called Spice so we have that Next up, I wanted to mention a matte skin tint. And I tried this, I think, started using towards the fall, but I absolutely love this product. It's from Iconic London. It's their super smoother blurring skin tint. And to me, this is kind of just like a lightweight foundation. Um, they market it as a skin tint and it kind of is, but I feel like it's more leans towards a foundation and it's a skin tint that has a matte finish, like a semi matte finish, which I love because I feel like most of the skin tints out there, like this one, they kind of have more of like a dewy glowy finish. This one dries down to more of like a satiny matte and I love it. It really does like blur the skin. It feels really lightweight and it lasts all day for me. So this is in the shade Golden Medium. I do wish they had more shades, but this shade works really well for me when I have a tan. I don't have a tan right now, so this one I haven't been wearing as much lately, but I do really, really like this. If you're looking for a skin tint type of product, but maybe you have more oily skin or you just don't like that glowy look, check this out. It's great. And then we have one other tinted product, which is a drugstore one. Um, I had a video using all drugstore products and I use this and I love this. It's so nice. It's the L'Oreal Age Perfect 4-in-1 Tinted Balm. So it comes in this little pot and it has just like this really nice balmy texture. It looks very skin-like, super lightweight. Just apply it with a brush and it just looks like your skin but better. And even though it is kind of like that tinty balm, it didn't get too oily on me. Um, I've tried some other balms out there that just felt like really oily and heavy on my skin. This was not like that at all and I love it. And amazing product from the drugstore. So that's that. And then we have one high-end 
uh, true foundation. I actually ended up wearing this on my wedding day in combination with Dior Air Flash, which I guess is discontinuing or is discontinued, which is extremely sad because I would have put it in this video because it's an amazing foundation. But this is the one that I layered underneath and I just started using this again because I have this in multiple shades and this is my pale shade it is stromboli and then my tan shade I believe it's called vanitu or something like that um, but yeah this is the NARS light reflecting foundation I absolutely love this it has great coverage and it says light reflecting but it's not like shimmery and it kind of just makes your skin look airbrushed and I feel like the longer I wear this the better it looks like when I first put it on I'm like okay this is kind of giving slightly cakiness like just like very slightly but as it like kind of like sinks into my skin it warms up with my skin it just becomes so beautiful um, I have this on today it just wears all day looks stunning in photos and I just it's one of my favorites so this one has been great and like I said I wore it on my wedding day in the Dominican Republic, in the humidity, had no issues, but I did layer air flash over that, so just saying. Okay, I need to take a deep breath. <sighs> We're in the third trimester, folks, and just the, the breathing issues have just gotten increasingly worse, so hopefully it's not too annoying. So now let's talk about concealer. I'm only gonna mention one, and this was my most used, and I really just fell in love with this in 2022, even though it didn't come out that year. This is the Hourglass Vanish Concealer. I have this in the shade Cedar, and also in the shade Fawn, depending on how tan I am, and this is just the best. It has amazing coverage, and you only need a tiny bit. If you're gonna go on and do like the full triangle motion, you're gonna hate it because it's it's just too much for that. You just need like little dots here and there and it's just beautiful. It has that airbrush finish and it doesn't cause me to get oily in my T-zone. I was finding that a lot of the concealers I was using, it wasn't so much the foundation that was getting me oily, it was the concealers because a lot of concealers are like, oh, we're gonna be super moisturizing for your under eye. But then when you're using in other parts of your face that don't need that kind of hydration, it's just like, no. So this one, it's not drying. Um, you definitely wanna make sure your under eyes are prepped and all of that. But this, um, it doesn't get me oily throughout the day and it's just such a beautiful, beautiful formula. Super great coverage, nice and airbrushed and it's, my number one used for sure. That's that, then let's talk about powders. So we have a few different powders I wanna mention. So this is the Laura Mercier Translucent Ultra Blur Powder. I started using this in place of my Ilia Soft Focus, um, which I do still love, but it's just like a really small um, packaging and you don't really get that much. So this, you get a ton. It is, uh, I think there's like a slight like I don't know if there's like a slight like sh not like shimmery factor but it's not like completely completely matte I would say it gives you like a satin matte finish but I do really like this um I can set my under eyes I can set my whole face with this no issues just a really nice powder and you get a lot of it so it's the talc free version of the Laura Mercier uh, regular translucent and I will say that I don't only use talc free powders um, anymore I was mainly doing that because I was getting milia under my eyes but I don't get milia under my eyes anymore ever since I started using a certain eye cream so that's why I kind of went back to kind of using talc powders as well but whatever um, then I wanted to mention a drugstore translucent powder. So this is the Revlon Colorstay Blot Matte Setting Powder. I do believe this is talc free as well, but this is really nice. It reminds me a lot of my Ilia Soft Focus. So this one, it has just like a slight kind of like peachy tint to it, but it's really nice. It blurs the skin. It keeps you from getting oily and it's just a really great powder from the drugstore. There aren't too many from the drugstore that I do like, and this is one of them. So that's a great one. And then I also wanted to mention a powder that I like for baking. And so I say for baking because this has a tint to it and I don't like to put this on other areas of my face because then it would change the color. But this is the Givenchy Prisme Libre Voile 
rosé powder. It's the light baby pink one. This is absolutely beautiful. On the under eyes, if you want to do some baking and just kind of brighten that area, this is beautiful. And if I ever feel like it's too pink, like I feel like sometimes when I'm really, really tan, it's too much, I'll just mix it with a different powder that will kind of like bring it back to like neutrality. Neutrality? I don't know if that's a thing, but you know, you can always mix your powders. You can always mix them. So those are a few loose powders. Now for a pressed powder, I finally got on the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush, Airbrush Flawless Powder Train that everyone loves. I really, really like this. Um, I especially like to use this on days where I don't feel like using a um, loose powder. Like some days I'll just set my under eye concealer with this or I'll set my whole face with this and it's really nice. It's not talc free, but I do really like this. Just a beautiful, beautiful powder that gives you that flawless airbrush finish. So I use shade two and I'll have to say this is worth the hype and I do like it. And I typically use it with one of these little powder puff sponge, not sponge, powder puff. Yeah, a triangle powder puff. I will link these, I get them on Amazon. I need to buy more because I'm like always running out. So this little sponge with any powder, it'll instantly make it more airbrush looking, I promise. So that's that. Now we have bronzers. We have two bronzers. Um, one is a matte bronzer. This is one that I've talked about for years. It's the Ilia. This is the novelty bronzer. I also have it in the shade Uptown, which is more of my tan shade. Um, but they both have beautiful, beautiful olive undertones. And I feel like there are so many brands out there and they neglect the olive tone bronzer. And it's like, dude, not everyone wants like a warm, like ready orange. Like that doesn't look good on everyone. Um, so Ilya just really gets it right for me. So I love their bronzers and um, they blend really nicely. They are not chalky. So for matte bronzers, Love the Ilia. And then for a glowy bronzer, I love this face powder. It's actually, you know, just a face powder from Armani. This is the Luminous Silk Glow Powder in shade nine. I love this. The color of it is beautiful. And it just gives like a soft, soft shimmer. Like very, very soft, not like glittery or like too much. It's just like a nice glowy bronzer. And obviously this comes in a bunch of different shades so you can get it for the rest of your face if you like that shimmer all over. But I typically only like the shimmer for my bronzer. So shade nine from Armani, so good. Then for a cream bronzer, I love this Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpting Stick in the shade medium dark. The color is great for an olive skin tone like mine. Even when I am fair, I can still get away with using this. I'll just use a little bit less. Um, it blends really nicely. Um, it's not too emollient or greasy and it just is the best. So I guess you could use this for contour or, you know, bronzer. It is relatively neutral. So it's not super duper warm, which if you have an olive skin tone, you know that you kind of need something that's a little bit more neutral, not something super warm. So this is kind of right in between. I love the shade medium dark. Now let's talk about blush. So I have to mention two like cream type blushes. So first are the Beauty Pie Super Cheek blushes. These are absolutely so good. Um, the two shades that I have are Universal Pink, which is this bright ass one, and Bare Blush, which is a little bit more muted pink. Both stunning. They remind me so much of the Hourglass blush sticks, but like in pot form. Um, they're super pigmented. They give this kind of like airbrush finish to the cheeks and they're not greasy, not too like sticky if you want to like layer them up. Absolutely gorgeous formula. Um, cannot say enough. And then the next product is a cream blush with a powder blush. And this is the Patrick Ta Duo. And this is my favorite color. It's called She's a Doll. So if you like that Barbie pink cheek, this is truly the best. You can get the cream blush with the coordinating powder blush and it's just beautiful, stunning. Love that. Did I say it? She's a Doll is the shade. And then we have two other powder blushes. So this one I used a lot this year, especially during the summertime. This is the Heaven's Glow Blush in Rococo from M Cosmetics. 
it looks kind of like a bronzer, but it has like a slight kind of like rose goldy undertone. And I love this, especially for the outer cheek, just to like mesh with my bronzer. It just looks so pretty. And it's like a baked type of blush. So it has like that glowy shimmer to it, but it's not like glittery and it's just so pretty. So I love that one. And then if I could only pick like one blush for the rest of my life, honestly, it would be this next one from Chanel. This is their Rose Initial Blush. I have this on today and I wear this so often. I feel like it goes just with everything. It's the perfect pink because it's not too cool and it's not too warm. And even though in the pan, it just looks like, okay, that's not that interesting. It is so stunning on your cheeks. And I know because it's Chanel, people are like, oh my God, it's that's so expensive. It's honestly not that expensive in comparison to a lot of blushes out there at Sephora and whatnot. Like it's like in luxury price, but it's not like extravagantly expensive. So I know it's not anything crazy looking, but I'm obsessed with this blush. And if I could only pick one blush for like the whole year, I would pick this. I just it looks good when you're tan. It looks good when you're not really tan. It's just so stunning and I just, I'm obsessed. Um, and I haven't gotten more from Chanel just because a few of you are, were like, that blush is it. Like the, the other one, Chanel ones, they're okay, but it's, it's something about this specific color. So if you don't have this in your collection, get it. And then you can say that you own something Chanel because who doesn't want to have a little cocoa in their life, right? <laughs> The next I'm gonna mention this highlighter palette. This can be used on the face or the eyes. I believe I talked about this in previous years as well, but it's the Dior Backstage Glow Face Palette in shade 001. Perfect highlighter palette. It has all the colors you need. It has like a true, like really frosty shimmery white, which I love for inner corner of the eyes, obviously. And these you can use on the rest of the face. You have a pinky tone, a more champagne and then a bronzy. So I like this for the eyes, I like this for the face. Um, I don't typically do a ton of highlighting on my face, but if I do, or if I wanna just do some eyeshadow type stuff, this is just it. I don't need any other highlighters in my life, to be honest, if I have this palette. So I wanted to mention it in this category of face because it's technically a face product, even though I a lot of times use it as eyeshadow. It's just amazing. And then I think we have one last like, complexion product and this is a setting spray. This is the Lawless Glam Guard. I've gone through two of these. It's the long wear setting spray. I love this. Use it on my wedding day. I will say uh, I don't really love the nozzle. I've, I've had two of these packages and I often have switched out the nozzle. I still have the original one on this, but something with the nozzle, it just keeps getting clogged for me, but it doesn't stop me from using this product because I love the formula. It really just locks everything in and it doesn't make my face feel too dried out or too sticky and it works great for cream products, powder products. It's just my absolute favorite. So Lawless Glam Guard. Now we're going to switch gears and talk about eyes. So this really beat up eyeshadow palette is one that I use all the time. It's from the drugstore. It's the Almay uh, brown intense eye color shadow palette. It just has like the perfect neutrals for every day. I use this all the time. It's clearly beat up, but you can get it at the drugstore. It has a nice kind of like soft, like has a little bit of shimmer in it that you can use for brow bone or the lid. A nice like dark matte brown, a nice like warm ready brown to put in the crease, um, a nice inner corner color. This color here, I don't really use that much, but everything else, is amazing. Pair this just with a bronzer in your crease and you are good to go. So great for every day. Little tiny palette if you want to use it for travel. Had to mention that and then my like big girl eyeshadow palette that I love is this one from Patrick Ta. It's the Major Dimension Volume 1. It just has all of the best colors in here. Just mattes, um, shimmers, like glitters. It has everything you need here and if I'm ever like sitting down to actually like do my eyeshadow and like do like a look. This is the one that I grabbed for. And then one other eyeshadow that I picked up in December that I had to mention is this Urban Decay Space Cowboy. It's just like a pressed glitter type shadow and it just adds a pop of glitter without having to be like messy or like a cream shadow or anything like that. It just adds like subtle bits of sparkle and then when the light hits you or like flash photography it's just like a little bit of 
pop of sparkle on your eyes and it's just so so pretty so urban decay space cowboy i know this was going viral for a while like on tiktok and i bought it because of that and i do really like it so that's that then for like brows or liquid liner my favorite brow pen and liquid liner is this nyx lift and snatch i have it in espresso i have it in taupe for brows and then I also have it in black so I'll either do my winged liner with this in black or espresso um, I have it on today it just has a really nice tiny brush tip applicator really fine because it's obviously supposed to be for your brows and getting really precise but that makes it a really great liner pen as well because it's really precise and um, lasts all day it doesn't smudge on me it's great so I have that in a few colors and then brow pencil I've been liking is this one from Makeup by Mar. It's the Master Blade in Classic Brunette. And this I didn't really think I would like because it's like this like thicker like bar of an eyebrow pencil. It's not like a teeny tiny micro. But something about the formula of this is really nice and very forgiving. It's almost like a dry formula. So it's very forgiving and you can just like sit there and just add a lot and it I don't know I feel like sometimes if there's too much like creaminess or pigment it just makes things like look too harsh or it's hard to blend out and I don't know something about this like dry texture just makes it really really nice and it makes it really quick to do as well so you can use just like the straight part and then you can turn it and kind of just go like that to like fill in the front and I don't know I've just been using this a lot and it has a nice like retractable thing like that yeah it brings me joy i guess i was really joyful right then <laughs> okay so that's that and then two mascaras i had to mention first is one with just like a really traditional really a really traditional brush this is a ysl lash clash this has a very basic large you know regular bristle brush um, but it's great. It has so much volume and it holds my curl. Most volumizing mascaras are too much. They don't hold the curl. I won't say this is super lengthening, but if you want just like volume or if you want to layer it with a lengthening mascara, this is so good. Doesn't smudge ever. It's just one of the best mascaras. So I had to mention that. And then this next one is probably like my all time fave right now. Um, and this is one of those like plasticky rubber brushes but it does everything I wanted to um, lengthens volumizes separates um, holds my curl so I have this on today I use it a lot it's a Swede cloud mascara I know this isn't as accessible as some because you can't like go into Sephora or anything and buy this but I promise you it's worth ordering online um, it doesn't smudge it's not like a tubing formula which I cannot stand when I try to take that off I just have flex everywhere and it's just like why do people want that why do you want flex I just don't understand it I don't understand it I hate it so um there's just some mascaras out there when they do that when I'm trying to take them off I'm just like I like you but we can't be friends like we can't it's just it's not gonna work out for me now let's move on and talk about lips we have two different lip liners so first is this drugstore one it's the revlon color stay long wire lip liner in the shade nude it's the perfect color have this on today it lasts all day for me um i just love it you do not need a pencil sharpener um just a nice like neutral nudie color love it it's cheap can't say enough and then the more high-end one that is available at sephora is the rare beauty lip liner again you don't need a pencil sharpener for this you just twist it up and the formula is nice it's really creamy and the two shades i like from rare beauty are um worthy which is a really nice almost the exact same color as my natural lips so i love this for like a day-to-day -day when i don't want it to really look like i'm wearing like tons of lip liner um it's pretty similar to the revlon but just a little bit lighter and then the other one from rare beauty i like is wise which is a deeper nude and it really gives you that full lip look because it's a darker shade and it's kind of like a contour so it like really really 
sculpt your lips and if I want my lips to look massive <laughs> I will use that and it's a little bit darker so if I want like more of a darker nude I'll go with that one but between these three I really don't need any other lip liner colors and I don't need a pencil sharpener so I can just do whatever I want so then for like lipsticks and glosses first is actually a lip balm and this is the summer Fridays lip butter balm I have this in all the shades my favorites are probably the vanilla the vanilla beige and then what's the darker one I can't even think of what the darker one's called, but it's like the next darker one. And these are just the best. I have one of these everywhere, like in all purses. It looks just like a kind of like a nice like lip gloss. It's really moisturizing, but it makes your lips look beautiful at the same time, especially if you um, just have like a lip liner with it. It just lip liner and this is what I'm wearing most of the time. Like I'll fill in my lips a good amount with the lip liner and put this over the top and it's just... People will just ask, what are, what lip color are you wearing? What lip color are you wearing? And I usually just say, oh, it's Summer Friday's lip balm with whatever lip liner. So cannot get enough of these. Then my favorite lip gloss of the year is definitely the Lawless Forget the Filler. This is the shade Cherry Vanilla. I love the smell of this. And, oh, I just got it up my nose. Dang it. Brief intermission to let you know that I did not remove that lip gloss from the tip of my nose. I thought I did. Like, I tried. I really tried, but it's there. So we're all just going to have to accept that I'm Rudolph's cousin. Um, please do not comment on this. I know that it is there. I know. Let's continue. It makes your lips look so full and juicy. And the color of this cherry vanilla especially, not only does it smell good, but it just makes your lips look like your natural lips but better. Like that Megan Fox lip color that she used to do like back when she was like first becoming famous like her lips just look so juicy and just like she naturally looked that way and it was just I don't know you know what I'm talking about like 2008 transformer vibes Megan Fox like those lips or just like a Victoria's Secret model or you know someone like Hailey Bieber you know just has like those lips that just look good you know so this just has a nice healthy like tint of cherryness to it it's not too red and it's just beautiful it's a little bit thick in consistency but that just makes it last on the lips all day so I love these and this shade in particular is my favorite but all the shades are really nice and then we will talk about the lip product I have on my lips today this is the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump and this almost looks like a gloss but it has you know color to it and this is in the shade Mixed Berries, and I just love these. They have kind of like a minty plumping effect to them, but they make your lips, again, look so full and juicy. And this looks very glossy. Like, I don't know. And that helps your lips look even fuller. So I love these. If I don't want to wear a lip gloss, I will put this on. And, you know, people, they always ask. When I have this on, people are like, what is on your lips? It's this, Mixed Berries. <laughs> So that's that, and then a true lipstick formula that I love is this one from Armani, it's the Lip Power. And my most used shade is probably 104, which is selfless. And it's just the perfect like light nudie pink for my skin tone. And even though this is a lipstick, it lasts on the lips pretty nicely. So you don't have to apply as much. It's something about the lip power, like it's very powerful and it stays on, it's pigmented, but it's not drying. Um, and then another color I like, if I want something like a little bit lighter and more pink, is 501. And this kind of reminds me of like Mac Angel or something. It has like a frosty pinkness to it, which I really like, especially when I'm more pale like I am now. It just looks like really nice. But if I have like a dark tan, this looks insane on me. So just keep that in mind. But I love the formula of these. I think that is it for makeup. Yeah, I think that's it for makeup. So now let's move on and talk about hair products. So my probably most used hair product that you guys ask about is the Dyson Airwrap. And that's what I use 99% of the time. And this is what I use. This is the attachment I pretty much always use. And it's a long barrel attachment. I believe this is the one point two 1.2 yeah I'll put it on screen but this is the barrel that I use the most often I have the new air wrap and the old air wrap I like the old air wrap for the curling attachments the new ones 
I don't know. They're not the same exact size, even though they say they are. They're not the same. And I just feel like the curling attachments are better. So I don't know if you can even get the old one. But this is the attachment that I like. Um, it's this long barrel. Not the super skinny one, but not the big one either. It's just my perfect attachment. Love the Dairy Snare Up. I know it's expensive, but 100% worth it to me. 100%. That's that. Um, hair color. This is what I use to maintain my color. I got my hair done in a salon, I think, twice in the past year. So in between, I will use this to freshen up. It's the DP Hue Gloss in the shade Black. Wear gloves when you apply this. I like to apply this on pretty much almost dry hair, like wring out all the water, like get out of the shower and do it, and then apply it because it will, will take the most when your hair isn't super sopping wet. And I like to leave it on for like 20 minutes. And it's almost like a hair dye. But it is, like, it's just a semi-permanent gloss. It rinses out. It's a deep conditioner at the same time. And I'll use this, like, once, like, every other month or so. Or, like, every six weeks. And it just keeps everything looking nice and fresh. It doesn't really do a ton to, like, cover grays. Like, I don't know if you'll see some here. I haven't used this in a while. But it will cover gray. Like, if you really put it on like dry hair it'll it'll take it a lot better but it makes your hair super shiny and i use the black shade because i think that it's called dark brown that pulls red on me and this has no like warm undertones at all it's very very neutral so it'll get rid of like brassiness as well and even though it is black like it's just like a gloss so it's not going to be like full-on black hair color so don't let that scare you too much um, one of my favorite shampoos that I tried this year is this Nutrafol Root Purifier Scalp Microbiome Shampoo. This is great. Um, it helps with like scalp health and build up. And I don't know if it necessarily makes your hair grow because that's not why I use it. But um, this is great if you have a more sensitive scalp. And a lot of the scalp shampoos out there, I feel like make my hair more greasy. And this actually prevents that. It kind of like balances the scalp so it produces less oil. So I liked it for that as well. So I've gone through two of these and I do really like them. I don't feel like it will really do much for flakes. So I will oftentimes pair it with the Dr. Eddie's Happy Cappy medicated shampoo, which is for babies with cradle cap. But if you have flakes, this is the best thing that I have tried for my scalp. It got rid of all of my scalp issues. So if I ever start see them creeping back up, I'll go in with this. Um, I also just started using the new Way Dandruff Shampoo, and that's great as well. Um, but this is great. I feel like it's the most effective if you're suffering. And um, I like to pair this with like a, a double cleanse, like do a double shampoo because this like comes out like a lotion and I feel like your hair gets greasier faster when you use this. So this combo I used a lot during 2022. So that's that. And then we also have my tried and true Jisoo Honey Infused Hair Mask. This is my most repurchased hair product, I think. Um, it's just a thick hair mask and I don't ever use conditioner. I just use hair masks because I only wash my hair like once a week. So anytime I wash, I go in with this hair mask. It's detangling, smells amazing, and doesn't weigh my hair down. I just have not found anything I like better. There's other masks out there, but they're loaded with silicones and then my hair just feels like it's coated and it's weighed down. So that's my fave. And then my favorite product to use out of the shower is this one. It's the Olaplex number no. nine Balm Protector Hair Serum. You can use this on damp hair or dry hair. I typically use it on damp hair once I get out of the shower. It detangles, adds heat protection, it gets rid of like frizziness, and it's just the best. It's a very, very lightweight serum. Almost comes out like a like a gel serum texture. It's not like an oily type of serum at all. And it doesn't weigh my hair down. It doesn't like add like a feeling to my hair. Like I don't feel like I have a product in my hair when I have this in and makes your hair super shiny, holds your style better I feel as well. And I just can't say enough about it. It's my favorite. I've gone through like three of these. Then now let's touch on fragrance really quick. So first and foremost, you know I have to talk about it. You know I have to talk about it. We have 22 Auras from Letta Fragrance, which is my brand. And this was absolutely my most worn fragrance of 2022, 22 Auras. This is just my signature scent. Like I never really had a signature scent that I would just reach for like day after day after day that I feel like was good for 
pretty much any occasion, pretty much any weather, this is it for me. And I created it, so even better. So if you have not tried 22 Auras, please do. It's so hard to describe, and I see people trying to describe this, and you guys are like, oh my god, I get it. This is so hard to describe. But it is, it is fresh, yet warm, yet a little bit soft, spicy, a little bit musky. It has just so many things to it. It's so hard to describe. And I think that's what makes it the perfect signature scent because it's not too much of anything. It just, the the right amount of floral, the right amount of sweetness, the right amount of muskiness, the right amount of woodiness. You know, it just, it just makes it so appropriate. Like this is the most appropriate fragrance ever. <laughs> like, and I just really don't get sick of the scent. There's just something about it that is addictive and you wanna go back to it. And anytime I smell this in my hair, like this lasts for days in my hair. Like I'll get a whiff and I'll be like, oh, I haven't washed my hair in a week, but it still smells good because I got this in here. Um, it lasts really well in my hair, really well in clothes. It lasts good on my skin as well, but for like days on clothes or hair. And anytime I get a whiff of it, I'm just like, you really did that because every time I smell it, it's, it just makes me happy. So I love it and I, I'm so glad you guys are loving it too. Um, we're working on our next ones, but it's a process because I want I want a good following act to this because this has been just so great. So the next one, it has to be perfect. So that would be my number one fragrance recommend from 2022. But I'll quickly, I'll quickly mention a few others that I tried and loved. Um, this one is Moonlight in Heaven from Killian. I tried this back during the summertime. I know I tried it before that, but this is just so nostalgic for me. I said this when I first got it, but I am, you know, part Asian. I am a quarter Filipino. And something about this just reminds me of my childhood. It's like mango sticky rice, which I didn't really grow up having mango sticky rice. I did grow up eating a lot of rice. But it has that, I don't know, there's just something about it that just reminds me of my childhood. And it's a little bit fruity. It is sweet. It's not overpowering. It also smells a little bit like laundry-esque. And I don't know, it just makes me really happy when I spray this. So a great kind of like summertime smell in my opinion. Or like if you're going on vacation, this is beautiful. Killian Moonlight in Heaven. Then another fragrance I tried out this year, and this is more of like a fresh fragrance as well. It's Initio Musk Therapy. And yeah, this is a really nice, clean, fresh one. It reminds me of like Dove Body Wash and Barreto's Baldia Freak, like mixed together. I don't know, it's fresh, musky, a little bit fruity. Um, if you wanna just like smell clean and good, but kind of like addictive at the same time, this one is really, really nice. So those two I tried out this year. And then another one that I tried out this year and I really fell in love with, it's so old, but it's Armani Code for women. And this is so nice. I can't believe I never really owned it, but it's so addicting and nostalgic to me. It's floral, but it also has like honey in there and like an orangeness to it. So I don't know, it's like fresh, floral, but sweet and sexy all at the same time. I think this is one that could be worn year round. But I fell in love with this this year. And I have to say that those three fragrances I just mentioned are much more perfumey than my fragrance, 22 Auras. This almost comes off as like skin scent, like your skin but better type of smell to me where it's just something that smells good, whereas the others smell more perfumey. I don't know if that makes any sense. If you've tried it, maybe you kind of see what I mean, but it doesn't smell like boring skin. Like, I don't know how to describe it. It's so hard, but it's less perfumey. It's more of like an experience. I don't know. <laughs> I need to just stop talking. Okay, so with that being said, we are gonna wrap up today's video. And if you notice, I did not mention any skincare in today's video and that's, kind of for like two reasons. A, because this video is getting super duper long. And B, I want to sit down and really do a full updated skincare routine. I know I keep saying that I need to do one, but I want to do one that touches on, you know, pregnancy safe products. And there's a lot of products that I haven't really talked about yet on my channel. And I don't want to just do like rapid fire. I'd rather sit down and talk about them fully. And I'm working on getting some codes for you guys so that'll help because I know skincare is pretty expensive. 
but I just want to do a whole separate video on that. So hopefully you guys don't mind, but uh, yeah, that's going to wrap up today's video. I hope you had a great 2022 and 2023 is off to a great start for you. I am, <laughs> I'm feeling good, but I'm ready to not be pregnant anymore. I have a little over two months left and I'm just kind of over it at this point. So if I am a little bit MIA here and there, it's just because I have no energy and I'm not feeling the best, but I try to try to keep trucking for you guys. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.